Once you've installed your solar thermal uh, rig, you're going to need to in, uh, fill it up and you're going to need to commission it. Uh, you could use water, but um, most people nowadays are using a heat transfer fluid. Um, so what we've got set up here is a, um, is a solar flow pump uh, from Fernox. And what we're going to do is we're going to practically ins install uh, the, the heat transfer fluid into the solar panel. So you've got the, um, an example of a solar panel up here. Um, and what the heat transfer fluid does, um, it, it, just, it just basically provides a, an increased efficiency over water. Now, someone's mentioning we were talking about glycol over yep. there. What does glycol look like? I mean, you've got a before and after that we can Yeah, we've got a before and after down here that we can show you. So glycol really is just a very viscous uh, heat transfer fluid. Um, in Don't the, recommend in, drinking it. I wouldn't recommend that. drinking it or putting it on your plants or any other thing. <laughs> Um, and basically, this allows the heat transfer within the, within the pipes that are within the solar thermal rig to uh, be much more efficient. Um, in the solar S1 that Fernox provide, um, we, we use a propylene glycol. Uh, it's, it's a lot safer than ethylene glycol. Um, and, and again, like I said, it provides that frost protection. Um, and if you put it in, at the, right, in the right dosage, which is already pre-mixed in the solar S1, you get frost protection to around about minus 28 degrees C. So it is really good protection. And what effect does it have on the system? I mean, it's just the protection aspect of it. it? Um, well, it, it protects the system from freezing up um, uh, during the winter months. Um, it, allows, it allows, like I said, an increased efficiency in heat transfer. And while, this, while if you use a Solar S1 as well, in there you've got a corrosion inhibitor. Um, so the corrosion inhibitor prevents any corrosion happening um, inside the system. It's equivalent to the, the um, F1 or any other corrosion inhibitor you'd put inside a st standard central heating system. Um, also in there as well is the thermal uh, uh, stabilizers. Um, and it, and it, the thermal stabilizers provide um, a stability up to 360 degrees for when the panel uh, remains still, when there's no flow happening in the panel. Um, and, that, you know, the sun is always bearing down on the panel, there's heat always being transferred, and if there's no flow within the panel, say there's no demand, or the panel has not, you know, it's not been specced right, I'm sure that won't happen. Um, but it, it will remain stagnant, and the glycol within it will burn. Now, for the purposes of the demonstration, a bit like a movie when you see them drinking whiskey, actually it's yep. really tea. We've coloured this up here, Absolutely, we? so we yeah. can see it's it. just coloured water. See, so, so this is all the equipment you need, is it? Yeah, basically this is all you need. You need a solar flow pump and you need a, and a, and you need a, 20, a 25 litre or 20 litre uh, can of S1. Um, so if, uh, if we turn... To, ready to give us a, a demo? Yeah, ready to give you a demo. So what happens is you connect the outlet from the, from the solar flow pump to the inlet of the system. Um, and the outlet of the system, which usually uh, is, a, is the lower point, will be connected to the top of the tank. So that way you're constantly circulating the heat transfer fluid around the system, and you're helping also to remove the air within the system. Constant circulation um, will allow you to uh, remove all the air. Um, and within the tank, we have um, a tube that comes down into the liquid, and that allows the air to be bubbled through the liquid and doesn't allow any more... Doesn't allow any more air to be circulated within it. That's fine, he's just turned it down a bit. I think you can see on the screens any close up uh, stuff here. Simon Patterson, yes. how uh, often should you do this to the system? Right, um, as a manufacturer, we'll, you'll have to do an annual check. Now, to yeah. do an annual check, you use your refractometer. Right. Now, obviously, a refractometer, we can actually uh, put a spotted glycol out of the system onto the refractometer, and then that will actually tell us what the antifreeze protection level is. Also, it will tell us the acidity of it as well, because um, we get a little bit of litmus paper, you can try it, so obviously the pH side of things as well. Now, we always say as a manufacturer, do an annual check, check the uh, antifreeze, check the glycol, check the pressure in the system, but then every three to five years, I would recommend changing the glycol. But, Always check before you actually do it. Right. And Simon, you will apply a label to show when it's been done as well, won't you? As That's right, yeah. So with every, with every can, you get a, a, a repeatable uh, label, and you put that on the system, it shows the date when you installed it. Um, yeah, and like Simon says, if you check that every year using a refractometer, or you can use a, a renewable system health check that Fernox provides, um, you'll ensure that your frost protection um, is, is, a, is a premium level and your system is protected. And so when you actually do the flint flush, which we'll do in a second, how yep. long do you leave it running for? I mean, how do you know when it's, when it's done? Um, generally, um, you know, 
you leave it, leave it running until you can see air bubbles coming out of the bottom, until all those air bubbles run out. You can also use the clear piping as well to show where the air bubbles have, uh, continue to uh, flow through the piping. And once you don't see any air moving through the piping anymore, you know, you've, you've finished circulating and removing all the air from the system. Well, I, I know you spent ages yesterday getting it so that we could get it to this system where <laughs> yeah. we had air in the system. So let's, yeah. should we have a look at it? Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's turn it on and uh, let's just get it going. So yeah, um, the outlet of the pump um, is now pushing the heat transfer fluid, the solar S1, through the solar panel um, so and removing there, so the air bubbles. Nice. So you've got to keep circulating, um, to keep removing the air. Um, air obviously trapped within the system could cause a, um, a high heat points, uh, could cause fractures and damage to the system. So uh, also allowing the uh, fluid to throw through allows to remove any, any, any little bits of trap debris you might have, any, any construction debris, anything like that. Yeah, uh, just, as, just as an installation point of view, uh, coming from the installation background, there are little tips on how to, because with you having the rib pipe, the ribs can actually catch those little bits of air. And obviously the more ribs there are, then the more air there's going to be. So what we do is we have little tips on how to actually, when you're commissioning, by the one-way valves, we actually turn them at half cock. So in reality, what happens is we reduce the flow going through the system. So it actually then um, reduces the flow going through, but gravity fills it. Right. So it pushes the air out gradually. And what, right. It may be a really stupid question, but what happens if you don't treat the system? What happens then is because there's air in the system, then obviously it'll heat up, but we can't put air through a pump. So the pump will basically shut down. But not only that, the glycol then will go off. It'll probably go to a tar, mm. a black color. And then, but we can't transfer heat. We can't do that. That's, uh, sorry, we can't transfer um, air as heat. Right. So it's got to be, it's got to be fluid. Okay. Uh, we recommend as a, as a manufacturer, minimum of 45 minutes filling and flush, filling and filling the system to make sure all the air is out of the system because on a solar system, its major enemy is air, yeah. for Brilliant. sure. Okay.